In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This gospel which we heard read today is read on the Sunday before we enter into Great Lent itself. And in fact, this day literally stands at the threshold to our Lenten journey. Our Lenten journey begins this evening. And the church and her wisdom presents this gospel to us as a completion to the Lenten Triodian and as the mark of our entrance into our great Lenten journey. Let us look at what we heard read today and then let us take time to look at the significance of this Lenten journey in light of what our Lord has told us this day. The Lord said to his disciples, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father also will forgive you. You say this every time you say the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven others. We ask God to forgive us with the measure upon which we are willing and not only willing, but upon how we actually forgive others in our life. Those sins that they commit against us, both small and sometimes very great, and sometimes even unto death. Yet our Lord and the Lord's Prayer teaches us that forgiveness of sins by us, not just by God, but by us of one another is essential not only to our Lenten journey, but to our very salvation. And our Lord goes on and he says, but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. This is what you pray each time you pray the Lord's Prayer. Forgive me my trespasses inasmuch as I have been willing and do forgive others. Our Lord goes on in this gospel, understanding that forgiveness of sins and fasting go hand in hand. And our Lord says, and when you fast, Notice our Lord doesn't say, if you fast, or if you choose to fast, or if you like to fast. Our Lord says, when you fast, it is an expectation of the Lord that we will fast. It is without question that we will fast as Christians. It is the law of the church. It's the law in the Old Testament and it's the law in the new church, but not simply as a burden in which our Lord lays upon us, but rather our Lord who fashioned us from the dirt of the earth and breathed himself unto us, understands precisely how essential fasting is to our very salvation. And in fact, the lack of fasting, of not fasting, is what got Adam kicked out of paradise and sent into this world. Let us continue to our, listen to our Lord's words. And when you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. Do not boast about our fasting. Some boast about giving up little things when the Lord asks us to give up all meat and all dairy products. And even then he tells us to not boast about our fasting, but to leave it for God himself to see. But when you fast, again our Lord says, but when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And our Lord begins to explain to us why this fasting and forgiveness of sins is so essential. 
He says in that gospel, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. We all know this. You know if you own a home, you are constantly painting it and washing it and cleaning it and fixing it because in time it will decay away and fall to the ground. No matter how much you paint it, no matter how much you clean it, eventually it will turn to dust and back into the earth. It will not last, sometimes not even for our lifetime, let our children's and grandchildren's time. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in. So many of us spend huge amounts of money on security systems to protect the things that we possess. And yet in a moment they are consumed by fire or by thieves. And no matter how much we spend on security systems, it will not protect us from a willing thief. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. So many of us work on building our own personal empires. Sometimes they're about this big. But we delude ourselves into thinking that we have established something that will last. Because all the empires of this world eventually crumble. And our little empires crumble long before we die, quite often. But our Lord tells us to build our place in the kingdom of heaven. And our Lord says, for where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Do we treasure the kingdom of heaven? And if so, our heart is with God and where it will stay for all eternity. But if our treasure is only here on earth, and so there is where our heart is, and the moths will consume it, and the rust will turn it into nothing but rusty dust. But let us build our treasures in the kingdom of heaven. You know, the Synaxarian of this day reminds us precisely why this fasting, why our prayer, why our forgiveness, why our being in church throughout this great Lenten journey is so essential. The fathers of the church tell us that on this day, we make remembrance of the exile of the first fashioned man, or Adam, from paradise into this world. Adam's sin was his pride, his inability to be able to ask God for forgiveness and his inability to forgive others. It was his pride that became his downfall. It was his pride before God when he couldn't even admit to God that he had sinned and transgressed, but he blamed it on Eve, and Eve blamed it on Satan rather than seeking the forgiveness from God and from one another. But the verse of that Synaxarian says, let the world mourn bitterly along with the ages past, all of those who have gone before us, as by sweet eating it had fallen along with those who had fallen. Adam was told to fast. Adam and Eve were told to fast from the one tree in the garden. They could have everything in paradise, but they were told to fast from that one tree until they were mature enough and ready to eat from it, but they did not fast. And because of their lack of fasting, they transgressed the laws of God and brought sickness and suffering and death upon all mankind, and they were cast from paradise into this world. And even when God confronted Adam in the garden, when Adam was hiding because he lost his divine raiment because of his sin, God gave him the opportunity to confess, to repent, and Adam was too proud. Adam, Adam, where are you? 
And Adam could simply say, I'm hiding because I'm naked. And our Lord says to him, what have you done, Adam? And Adam still would not admit to what he had done and simply blamed it on Eve when God confronted him. God gave him many chances not only to fast, but to ask for forgiveness. And in his failing for asking for forgiveness, he was condemned to this world. The church fathers say it is the Sunday of forgiveness, also known as Cheese Fair Sunday. Cheese Fair because it's the last day upon which the church tells us we ought to eat cheese or dairy products. Last week, we were supposed to have begun our fasting from meat. And today, we plunge into the full fast. So this afternoon, we can have dairy products. But tonight at sunset, we turn to the beginning of our great Lenten journey, where we fast as Adam and Eve were called to fast in paradise. The fathers tell us that today's lesson from the Holy Gospel teaches about us about forgiveness and fasting, and how both are crucial to our own return to paradise. Because that is where our Lenten journey is meant to bring us, to the resurrection of Christ, and ultimately back into paradise with God. The Divine Fathers also set the anniversary of the exile of Adam from paradise on this blessed day, at the entrance of Great Lent, to show us by deed as well as by word how great is the benefit that accrues to man from fasting and from repenting, from asking for forgiveness. And on the contrary, she places this day here today to remind us of the exile of Adam and Eve from paradise for their lack of forgiveness and their lack of fasting. And on the contrary, how great the harm that comes from destructive gluttony, from the disobedience to the divine commands of God. The sin of gluttony resulted in Adam and Eve's banishment from paradise because they disobeyed God by eating from the tree from which he had forbidden them. So the church reminds us this day it encourages us to return to paradise and the happiness which man had in paradise where there was no sickness, no suffering, and no death, but man was in the very presence of the living God. And by means of fasting or obedience to God is how our Lenten journey will bring us to the resurrection and to the gates of paradise an entrance into life everlasting. Let all of us as a community begin the fast together this evening. Let us journey with one another by being in this church on Wednesday nights for the pre-sanctified liturgy and on Friday nights for Compline so that we may journey together to Holy Week and to journey through Holy Week together to meet Christ risen from the dead. At the end of this service, as you come forth to receive your bread, I will ask you as your Father in Christ for your forgiveness. And the response is, God forgives. But you also in the tradition of the church ought to ask me for forgiveness of the sins that you have done against me as I ask of you. And I will say, God forgives. And as you're doing that, we will sing the beautiful hymns of Pascha, the canon from the resurrection service to remind us of where this Lenten journey will bring us. And just before we do that, we will sing just a few hymns from the forgiveness vespers that we're supposed to celebrate this evening together. But so that we may ask forgiveness of one another while we are here today, we will sing a few of those verses for perhaps five minutes, and then we will finish liturgy and you will come forth and I will ask you for forgiveness because it's only in that forgiveness and only in forgiving one another that as a community, we can journey through great Lent and meet Christ risen from the dead.
God bless you.